portrait is one of my favorite subject matters because you can really dive into a person's personality and capture the moment and even show emotions with the portrait. So I want to share with you um, how to get started. And really what this video is going to be about is you following along with me so that I can show you what to see. Um, the whole idea is to give you a better idea of curves and relationships and all the various things that go on with the portrait. Uh, it is a beginning lesson because there's a lot more that can be shared. However, that will get you started on your way and on your path to drawing the face. Started, the first thing you're going to need is your sketchbook or sketch paper or even Xerox paper. And what you want to do is position your pencil so that, let's see if I can do it here, like so. Let's say that I divide this in half here and in here. I want the eye, where I want to start the eye, right about here, and I'm going to put a dot. That's about a half inch either way from this middle line, okay? Now, I'm going to start the portrait by building the features from the inside out. That means I'm going to start with the eye first, and then I'm going to relate the rest of the features to that eye and the size of that eye. So, let's get started. So, you know, one of the first things that happens when we try to draw an eye is that it becomes an oval. And, you know, this comes from our childhood, maybe. I don't know. But this is what an eye should not look like. It should not look like a football with sprung laces. Nope. No way. Now that we have our beginning dot, we're going to draw a curve. The curve will end up being about three-fourths of an inch long. Uh, for some of you, maybe the measurement of the tip of your finger to the first knuckle. Then I'm going to use a slight curve right there where the tear duct is and come around. It looks like a sideways S a little bit. You're going to put in your iris. Notice it doesn't really touch the bottom. All right, so you've got kind of a, a u-shape for the iris and there's a double line at the bottom i'm also going to put in the pupil and a window for the highlight this is very very important to get the darkest shade you're going to just keep layering on top don't bear down if you bear down it'll get real shiny on you then you want to striate out from the pupil and kind of little lines, zigzag lines, like so, so that you have that variated look that happens inside your iris. There's a little bit of value. Uh, you're going to put a little squiggly value there for the tear duct, and very light, light value in the corner. Okay, so I'm holding the pencil at the eraser and very lightly hitting the corners of the eye. This is because the eyeball is round and we want to show that. Now, there's a fold line that happens. It may be real rounded for some people and may be kind of flat. I'm going to put one in that's a little bit flat because that's what my eye looks like. You might look at your own eye and just determine what that fold line looks like. Once you have that line in place, you're going to do a little bit of shading up underneath it and let it fade towards your eye. Now, the eye is an eyeball. That's why they call it an eyeball, right? It's, it's a ball shape. It's a sphere. And so I've lightly drawn that sphere around the area where I want to determine where my eyebrow is going to go and the shading. So at the top of that sphere line guideline that I've put in, I'm going to put in the eyebrow. 
the strokes go straight up right where above where the tear duct is and then they turn just a little bit okay as they go to the side then very lightly you're going to put in some value around the edge of that sphere shape on the left side of the tear duct and let it fade up underneath so I'm holding the pencil at the eraser to, to give me that light sh shading. I can always get it darker. Right now, I just want to establish where those darks might be. And you have to keep in mind that when the light is hitting your subject matter, these shadows and shapes may look totally different and fall in a different place. This is a generic face that we're doing. There will often be a little bit of a hint of a fold line right up underneath the eye especially for older people, not so much children maybe. And you'll put a little bit of value underneath that line. So now let's talk about eyelashes. Remember, they're not weird curls like we saw on the football. Um, they're going to get real small at the top of the iris and then kind of flare out. They'll crisscross. They're not perfect. They'll be different lengths. Um, they might be different uh, darknesses depending on whether that person is wearing mascara or not, you know. Um, they may be thicker, they may be thinner. And so, and now we have also the little bitty hairs underneath that uh, come out from that center line right in there. So now that I have drawn this eye, I need to relate this eye to the rest of the features, or the features to this eye. And to do that, I need to understand the size relationship it has to the rest of those features, right? So for this part, I want you to have available a sheet of paper or um, an index card that works really good, something a little extra that you can use to measure this eye width. Because if I measure this eye right here, and I move my fingers over so I haven't changed you know, the gap there, what do you notice? Yeah, so the eye is an eye length, if I consider that to be a length, apart. So what I want you to do is you're going to take this index card, see if I can do this, and from the corner there to the tear duct, I'm going to make a mark. Then if I move this over, like so, and put a dot right there, <clears throat> move it over again, and put a dot right there, I will know where to draw the other eye. And so what I want you to do right now is to stop the video and go ahead and draw for yourself the other eye. Remember that it is a reflection of this eye, so the tear duct is going to be here, okay? The only thing that's not going to be a mirror image is going to be this highlight. If this highlight is right here on this eyeball here. It will be in the same position over here. Otherwise, the eyes will look crossed. Ta -da! relationship to the nose. Once again, I'm going to measure the length of my eye, and if I set it right here, you'll notice that the eye length falls about halfway, okay, on this nostril. 
So I'm going to use that information to help me figure out where to position my nose. Alright, to get started, I'm going to use my measuring tool again and then place it right under that tear duct, right at the tear duct, and place another dot so that I have an eye length down on both sides. It kind of makes a square when you think about it. Now I'm going to use a curve, almost a C and a backward C, to indicate the nostrils. And they line up right with the tear duct in most cases. Some people, they may be a little wider or a little narrower. Then I do what I call a pair of longhorns. It kind of looks like a longhorn shape. Um, so after I've made that shape, I'm going to come in and at the top, it's a, a darker shade and then fade it down. Okay. You'll notice that there's a little white gap between the nostril and the edge of that skin flap. Now you have to consider that the nose is kind of got a ball at the end of it, at the tip. So you think about it being a sphere right in here. And that's how you're going to consider shading. So I'm going to shade it very lightly on the side here as if it were a sphere. And then I'm gonna gently bring it up and let it fade into the value that I already have for the eye. I'll do the same thing on the other side, but I'm, I'm doing this as if the light is hitting from the left. So the left side is going to be a little bit brighter and lighter than the right side. Uh, I can then also shade the skin flap that makes up the nostril like so and give it a little form as well. So another relationship we can look at is the width of the eye. This part right here. Actually, if I hold my finger against my eye, that's about the width of my eye, right? And if I move my finger down, that's the distance from the bottom of your nose to this little curved part right here on your lip. We'll use that information to mark on our card and make that measurement. All right, so like I did before, I'm going to use the eye as my unit of measure. I'm going to place the card where it lines up at the very top of the eye and then make a mark at the bottom of the eye. I'm going to translate this and place this up underneath the nose and then make my mark. And then I'm gonna shift it down and make another mark. Let's see if I can move this where you can see that better. Very good. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a V right here for the shape of the mouth. And then I'm going to determine where those lips will fall based on my eyes. And actually, they, they usually fall right in line with your pupil. Now, again, it might vary from person to person. In fact, the width of this mouth may vary. What I don't want to do is make a really severe slant down. I want to make a real gentle slant to that guideline that I just drew. I'm going to draw another one straight across. And then I'll make another slanted line very gentle toward the other guideline that lines up with the pupil. Then I'm going to make a gentle curve up underneath the V of the mouth and two more curves. Now I have the top of my mouth. Now the bottom lip may be a little fuller, may be a little thinner. Again, this is a generic face. So I'm going to go ahead and make it the width that I have determined. And I'm going to make what I call a soup bowl. So I'm going to draw the shape that has a, a little flare at the ends. 
and kind of looks like a soup bowl. You'll notice it does not connect to the top lip. That's because the top lip, well, and the bottom lip actually, kind of fades into the skin of your jowls. There'll be a little bit of shading up underneath. And I'm going to just let this fast forward and let you see where the shading will fall. And you can kind of stop it as you need to or watch it and then come back into your shading. I think that would be best. Now I'm going to use the length of the eye to also figure out where the chin is going to go. And I'm just going to work myself around the shape of that bottom lip by making little marks. And if you drew the bottom lip correctly where you have that little bit of a cereal bowl, you'll get a little bit of an indention or um, a better contour for your chin area. Does the chin actually look like this? Not necessarily, but it will get you started. Okay, and what again, what you would want to do is compare the eye length of the person you're drawing to the length of the chin to see how it all relates, right? Once again, I'm going to relate the eye length on the eye to the side of the face. So I'm going to use my marking tool again and make a mark from the edge of or the corner of the eye to the side of the face. And that's really the side of the face that goes back behind the ear. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Then you want to divide that area into thirds. Okay, and then put a mark that's about two-thirds of the way from the corner of the eye. Very gently, you want to make curves. So it curves out where the cheekbone is and curves out a little bit where the eyebrow bone is. And now we're going to look at making an ear. Now, guys, ears are probably the most difficult thing to draw on a face because of all the um, variances in the shapes and the shadows and crevices that happen inside the ear. So I'm going to try and do this as simple as possible. We're going to make a curve up underneath, so we've got kind of a double line there, and then I'm going to shade and let it fade out. And then there's kind of this little curve thing that happens. Uh, it kind of looks like a question mark, doesn't it? So think question mark. And then we're going to have kind of a deep spot in where the earlobe is there. Uh, that kind of indicates the ear canal. So once I've got that going, I'm going to continue shading a little bit here and there. And I'm going to fast forward this. You're also going to see as I'm developing the ear, you're going to see me develop the sides of the face and the area underneath where the chin is. And, um, and basically your curves, wherever it curves in, you have some shading. And where it curves out, you have highlights. So like the cheekbone would be kind of a highlighted area. And the jowls around the lips might be kind of highlighted. So... I'm going to fast forward this and you can stop it and start it as you need to, to draw along with me.
Another difficult thing that beginning portrait artists have is they want to make the top of the head too short. And so really what's happening is they're thinking about um, the face. All right. They're not thinking about the fact that if you look at this profile, the skull slopes back. So when you're drawing, even when you're drawing a front view of the face, you have to include the top of the head. All right. That's in your view. So if you look at this picture and we move that distance from the eye to the top of the head and let it transpose over to the, the area from the eye to the chin, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so we're going to use this measurement to help us draw the rest of the head. is another difficult thing to draw and right now I'm just going to kind of give you the basic idea but you want to think about hair as being a shape draw the basic shape of the way that hair is laying and then you're going to stroke the hairs in the direction that the hairs would go so this is an example of what it might look for a person with a part in the middle of their head or a part on the side of their head. It's going to be darker as it gets toward the part. There'll be a highlight area um, as it goes away from the part and then it gets dark again. But you can see that the strokes go in the direction that the hair normally falls. The other thing might be curls. How in the world do we do a curl? So you're going to again kind of do a basic guideline for how that curl falls. And there are kind of two different types of curls. One's more wavy. So I'm going to come through. And wherever the curl dips in, you want dark. And where it dips out, you're going to make it light. And then we will stroke in our hair. The other type of curl might be that of a ringlet. And ringlets are really fun to draw. You kind of think of, of these curls like they're ribbons, all right? So here would be the ringlet. And I'm going to draw the basic shape. And basically, it's just rectangles with a foreshortened circle on top that kind of dips back behind. There we go. So you can kind of see the shape of this ringlet. You know, and, and too, if you're having a difficult time seeing those ringlets or the, the curls, you might get a piece of ribbon and let it kind of curl for you so you can see the basic shape and then just stroke in the hairs. Now, those curls back behind will be dark. So we'll put in our dark. 
and then on the side they might be a little darker and then have a highlight somewhere kind of off to the side middle again it's going to depend on where the light is hitting and how that light is hitting all right so another aspect of hair would be that of let's say a fro you have kind of a a wirely type hair texture and so this is a cool way to handle that you're going to take your pencil and it's kind of a tap and pull so I, the way I'm holding the pencil makes a difference and if that's not comfortable for you you may have to practice it for a while but I have my forefinger on top of the pencil and I, I tap down and kind of slope back up I'm so glad that you joined me for this lesson today and here's the trick what we learned is just looking at the relationships between the eye and the rest of the features right now the trick is to apply what you learn to draw on your own portrait and that relationship is going to change depending on whether the face that you're drawing is turned to the side looking up looking down. So you always want to co do comparisons as you are trying to figure out that relationship. 